Hello, Kryptonauts, and welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, here with my co-host, Jake Jabarelli, and Cryptolissa. For the time being, Cryptolissa is going to be just hanging out, sitting in the background, listening, while Jake and I give you the top 10 daily stats and crypto news of the day. So with that said, Jake, how is your day? Going pretty well. Thanks a lot, John. I appreciate it. Uh, there's <clears throat> a lot of stuff going on here in the office, and I've been very active and very happy to be active. But as that segues to the uh, this content is for entertainment purposes only, that was a terrible segue. I don't care. Any comments made by a host or any guests we may have on the show, it's not financial advice. Still there, John? Yeah, still here. Oh, I just that was a weird cutoff. Okay, yeah. Right, <laughs> like cool. I said, not a good segue. All right. So with that said, let's get started with your top 10 daily stats. So let's start off with, of course, Bitcoin in first place, settling at $41,972.49 with a seven-day loss of 4.5% and a market cap of $794 billion. Number two, Ethereum settling at $3,131.73 with a seven-day loss of 7.2% and a market cap of $373 billion. Number three, Binance Coin settling at $469.35 with a seven-day loss of 3.6% and a market cap of $78 billion. Number four, Tether settling at $1, of course, with a seven-day gain of 0.1% and a market cap of $78 billion dollars looks like they're neck and neck with uh binance coin there hmm. tether and binance did, coin. You, <clears throat> did you notice that usd coin and tether are right next to each other as well mm, yeah i see that yeah what happened was this huge gap of 78 billion dollars down to 46 there's nothing in between mm. <laughs> all right number where are we at five five, five. uh cardano settling at one dollar and 35 cents with a seven day gain of 3.5 percent and a market cap of 43 billion dollars and Actually, that's wrong. I, I missed USD coin. That was six. That was six. That's fine. Yeah. USD coin is right next to Tether. Yeah. So, yes, pretty much uh, number five USD coin, $1, uh, no gain, no loss set in the past seven days with a market cap of $43 billion. Okay. Now, now skipping number six to seven, Solana settling at $137.05 with a seven day loss of 9.8% and a market cap of $43 billion. Okay. Now, number eight, XRP. Settling at seventy-four cents with a seven-day loss of seven point one percent and a market cap of thirty-five billion dollars. Number nine, Terra, settling at eighty-one dollars and three cents with a seven-day loss of one point five percent and a market cap of twenty-nine billion dollars. And number ten, Polkadot, settling at twenty-four dollars and forty-five cents with a seven-day loss of ten point six percent and a market cap of twenty-six billion dollars. That there, Cryptonauts, is your top ten daily stats of the day. And of course, the five runner ups is Doge, Coin, Avalanche, Shiba Inu, Binance USD, and Polygon. Looking forward to the news. We got lots of interesting news on Shiba Inu today. So awesome. Um, I did kind of read ahead. It's just kind of a weird thing to be off, so off, off the cuff with our news, but this is the least common denominator of news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, your overall total market cap is at $2.09 trillion, up by 4%. And with that said, Cryptonauts, of course, we are getting our top 10 daily stats from CoinGecko.com. Make sure you go up to the top right corner here, click the little candy jar, collect your candies. I actually collected one of my, uh, I, I redeemed a rewards today. I went over and got this new thing that just was listed, is how to NFT book. I bought this one earlier today. Oh. It should be sit, sitting in my rewards right there it is. Dink. All right, Cryptonauts. So back to you, Jake. Go ahead. Yeah, well, we appreciate everybody listening in, on, as you do on a uh, semi-weekly basis here, since we post every Wednesday and Sunday. But if you like our content, we would appreciate you t telling YouTube that you do by hitting the like button. You can also subscribe if you like. Uh, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post. Uh, we're also on Discord on a regular basis, quite literally. A lot of people in there on a regular basis, talking, chatting, uh, 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 cajoling. Is that a word? Yes, that's a word. <laughs> and uh, we also have a market in there for NFTs. Yeah, we're on Patreon at uh, 3 5 and $10 if you'd like to help support us, as well as through various 
cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, Bat, and Raven. All the information is in the coin tree below. Perfect. All right, Cryptonauts, let's go ahead and get started with your top with your crypto news of the day provided by cryptopotato.com. All right, first news. Uh, should we do this one that just came out today or just do only 19th? Mm, I was I did I did include that one, but I mean, okay. you know, it's whatever. It's secret network stuff. Uh, it's too secret. We can't read that. All right, yep. I'll skip it to ESMA top executives. So the EU should ban proof of work mining written by Dimitar Zunzarov. The vice chair of the European of the European Securities and Markets Authority (ESMA), Eric Thieden, urged the EU financial regulators to prohibit the cryptocurrency mining model known as proof of work. He also claimed that Bitcoin has turned into a national issue for his homeland, Sweden, because of the amount of renewable energies devoted to mining the asset. The solution. This is big is, stuff. Mm -hmm. The this is really big, big news. I mean, I know I'm breaking into the middle here, but this is huge news. That the country's going to try to ban. What do they think they are? China? <laughs> <laughs> the solution is to ban proof of work. Bum, bum, bum. In a recent interview for the Financial Times, Eric Thieden, also director general of Sweden's FCA, opined that cryptocurrencies employing the proof of work mining mythology poses a significant risk to the environment. As such, European regulators should encourage the proof of stake model, which is less energy intensive. Quote, we need to have a discussion about shifting the industry to a more efficient technology. The solution is to ban proof of work. Proof of stake has a significantly lower energy profile. It is worth noting that the two largest digital assets by market capitalization, Bitcoin and Ether, rely on the proof of work mining technology. However, Ethereum is on its way to upgrading to the network to Ethereum 2.0 as the transition is expected to happen this summer. Following the development, the second largest blockchain protocol will start utilizing the proof of stake me method and thus becoming more green focused. Bitcoin, though, has no plans to switch to mining model, switching its mining model. Thieden said the primary digital asset is now a national issue for Sweden because a considerable percentage of renewable energy is currently dedicated to mining it. The ESMA ex executives think Swedish electricity should be employed in creating traditional services and not BTC. Quote, it would be an irony if the wind power generated on Sweden's long coastline would be devoted to Bitcoin mining. I don't know. I think that's a perfect use for it. <laughs> and there is a photo of Eric Thieden. Very nice gentleman. Like his tie. Good. Looks like look, it looks almost like a BTC tie. Hmm. <laughs> In October last year, the authorities of the Canadian town north town North Vancouver decided to employ the energy released from Bitcoin mining into heating residential and commercial buildings. The initiative should see the light of day during the first half of 2022 as it was supported by the joint efforts of the Lons Lonsdale Energy Corporations and the local digital asset miner Mint Green. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Mm, exactly. The latter asserted that its digital boilers could prevent 20,000 tons of GHGs from entering the atmosphere per uh, megawatt compared to natural gas. In turn, Karsten Vang, C CEO of Lon Lonsdale Energy Corporation, raised hopes that the collaboration will be beneficial for the Canadian town, home to nearly 50,000 people, and for the environment. Quote, LEC is on a journey to lower greenhouse gas emissions, and this project will be part of that. Beautiful. There's, there's so much. There's just so much to say in this, in my opinion. I'm amazed that, uh -huh. that uh, this the Swedish guy is, is so pissed. I mean, Sweden's not exactly always warm. I would think that they would be, oh, yeah, bring all the miners over here. We'll heat our houses in the most, uh, with electricity, the best way to heat anything anyways, because there's, there's, you know, especially if you're pulling it from wind power. No more natural gas, no more coal, none of those things anymore. I know Sweden's moving that direction, so I would think they would be in favor of proof of work for that sake. Obviously, it's going to be hard to do in the winter or in the summertime to get rid of the heat, but it, I don't know. I'm glad that, that uh, North Vancouver thought of that intelligent way of using mining equipment. Mm -hmm. I would think that would be kind of a neat uh, proposal. You're like, well, I know you don't need this all summer. But in the wintertime, we know you do. So here, uh, we'll give you a tiny little heater that also makes you money. <laughs> Love it.
love it. Continuing on here, Cosmos-based privacy startup NIM onboards network vial, uh, party validators, not validators, uh, validators by Mandy Williams. Uh, Privacy-focused startup NIM Technologies has developed the first block for its NIM mainnet. It has this is different from NIM. This is NYM. For those who can't read what I'm reading, and has started onboarding validators ahead of its mainnet launch. In a press release shared with Crypto Potato on Wednesday, NIM noted that it has welcomed some top firms as network validators, including the telecommunications giant Swisscom. Uh oh, sorry. That's, that's uh, yeah, anyways, <laughs> Switzerland, not Sweden. D uh, Deco Dokia Capital, Chorus One, Nodes.Guru, and a few others from the community like uh, Komodum. Mm -hmm. The uh, validators will help maintain NIM's mixed net privacy system, which can allegedly defeat nation state level mass surveillance. Well, that's kind of neat. They do this by providing consensus on the network arrangement of mixed nodes at any time, a public history of all NIM token transactions, in addition to creating and protecting certificates against double spending, including anonymous coconut credentials <laughs> used to access the, the mixed net. Speaking on the development of NIM, as a NIM validator, uh, Dominic Vincennes, FinTech Innovator Manager at Swisscom said, quote, NIM has built a powerful global privacy network that is both decentralized and incentivized, and we are thrilled to partner with NIM and support the development of privacy-enhanced infrastructure and foster the new data ownership-centered business models. We are convinced that data privacy is one of the most important factors of decentralized open networks to succeed, end quote. NIM has also uh, revealed that its development team has enabled smart contract uploads to its Cosmos-based blockchain dubbed NYX or NYX, a general purpose smart contract blockchain. For the announcement, NYX is expected to provide users with cost-effective and near instant transactions with a smart contract order ex execution speed of up to 10,000 transactions per section, per second, pardon me, or TPS. NYX's <clears throat> multi-use case Design combined the Cosmos Web Assembly based smart contract environment or Cosm Wasm <laughs> and NIN's powerful set of validators will enable it to meet the high computational requirements of the platform. Dave, with a long last name I can't pronounce, uh, here it. <laughs> Hi, here. Oh gosh. Here, Sizen. Bryceson. CTO of NIM Technologies commented on the launch saying, quote, we are pleased that our technic technical and partner technical and partnership decisions over the past year are paying off in that in addition to our privacy mix mixnet, we can now offer a powerful general purpose smart contract blockchain. This is a step in the dis direction, I mean, this is a step in the direction to allow us to extend coconut functionality, meaning application layer privacy to an entire developer ecosystem. The launch of the much anticipated NIM mainnet will mark the beginning of its incentivized global privacy mixnet. The mixnet token NIM will allow people to access mixnet, run mixed nodes in the network, and get rewarded, which is what we all care about, right? Rewards? No, it's privacy. Earlier in November, the firm announced that it had raised $13 million in the third investment round led by a 16Z. So, I'm sorry I tripped over so many words in that NIM. Mm -hmm. A16Z, <laughs> NIM isn't it uh, Anderson Horowitz? Yeah, and Anderson Horowitz, yes, that's Andreessen, their uh, yeah. crypto arm. Perfect. All right, coconuts. Sounds good. I like coconuts. Yep. I will invest it only because coconuts. Yep, coconuts. Because coconuts. Yeah. It's like seriously, like everybody invested into the sheep because why not? Cute little doggies. All right. Next exactly. news written by Andrew Thor Thorvalas. Hedera Governing Council will purchase Hashgraph IP while com uh, committing to open source code. Hmm. 
<clears throat> Hedera, a distributed public ledger for Web3 dApps, recently voted to buy the intellectual property rights for the Hashgraph consensus algorithm from Swirldies, Swirlds, Swirlds Incorporated. <laughs> Swirlds Incorporated, one of uh, the Hedera's governing council's founding members. Furthermore, the project will be shipped into an open source code model this year. Um, Hedera, Hedera's decentralization plans. According to a press release shared with Crypto Potato on Wednesday, the transition to open source will take place under the Apache 2.0 license. Up until now, Hedera has used an open review method, meaning that code was viewable for public scrutiny but not editable. Furthermore, Hedera plans to dissolve its C suite roles in order to transfer more power to the Hedera Governing Council. Dr. Lehman Baird, Beard Baird and Mance, uh, Mance Harmon, respectively CTO and CEO of, of Hedera, will now transition to equivalent positions at Swir Swirls Incorporated. Hedera states this is part of its mission to remove all centralized staff structure from the project. <clears throat> to that end, the organization will also roll out community staking nodes this year. Yes. The vision has always been for Hedera to be a council member driven organization enabling the most decentralized governance and therefore broadest reach in public network on the market scott thiel partner at dlp uh, excuse me dla piper a governing council member thiel explained that now is a better time than ever to encourage the rapid adoption of Hedera, of hedera given the growing public demand for distributed letter ledger technology Hedera's governing council is currently made up of 25 corporations, up from only five when the project launched. Members include IBM, Chainlink, Google, and Deutsche Telekom. What is Hashgraph? Hashgraphs, uh, Hedera's Hashgraph is designed to be a scalable, energy-efficient, distributed ledger solution for Web3 dApps. This is a divergent approach from the typical blockchain project, similar to how IOTA uses a unique data structure called the Tangle. Unlike blockchains, Hedera Hashgraph does not discard any containers of transactions, thus making it more efficient. It, <clears throat> it also does not require the energy-intensive proof-of-work mining that Bitcoin does to secure the network. Hedera has purchased the, Hedera I, the Hashgraph IP in confidence that a network split will not occur within its ecosystem, therefore releasing the patent upholding its ex exclusivity, ex exclusivity to the public will best serve as a mechanism to spur internal growth rather than give market competitors any new advantages. All right. So to me, it's not any kind of new news to me because, I mean, I've been keeping up on the Hedera's uh, uh, business plan for a while. So this is kind of cool that they're just now starting to publicly tell everybody, like, here we go. We're getting ready to roll the ball a little down, a little further down the road. Sounds good. Yep. Trying to make things as decentralized as possible. It's very important. Hmm. Continuing on here with uh, another Dimitar Zanzarov article. Morocco's biggest bank to dive into crypto by joining RippleNet. Otherwise it's known as XRP, right? The leading bank service operated in Morocco, uh, named with a, oh my goodness, uh, Adi Jari Wafa. Adi Jari Wafa? Sure. I hope I pronounced that correctly, bank has reportedly joined RippleNet. The latter is the international cross-border payment network designed by the American blockchain company Ripple. A local report revealed that Eddie Jarawafa Bank uh, had become a member of the RippleNet ecosystem. By joining the crypto world, the Moroccan financial institution has strengthened its position as an innovative banker banking leader in the North Africa region. As a result, members of Eddie Jarawafa Bank will be able to exchange transactions from each other from numerous destinations around the world. Moroccan dias diaspora consists of nearly 5 million people as over 1 million reside in France. Dane uh, Drioch, hope I pronounced that correctly, co corporate cash management manager, <laughs> management manager, not a double phraseology there, said his company has been seeking to enter the modern tech industry by launching several initiatives for more than a year. Joining RippleNet and thus touching on the uh, blockchain universe is another milestone for Adajar Wafa Bank, he concluded. Quote, with RippleNet, we connect to the blockchain, another fast, foolproof way to receive funds, end quote. 
Adijar Wafa Bank uh, confirmed it also partnered with Thunes, or Thunes, a transfer aggregator and a member of the Ripple Network, RippleNet Network, not redundant again. The collaboration should be uh, particularly beneficial to the Moroccan population living in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. Several months ago, the blockchain project joined forces with another banking institution, the Royal Monetary Authority, or Bhutan's Central Bank, Bhutan, excuse me. Um, their main goal was to launch a central bank of digital currency in the, in the Asian nation. The Royal Monetary Authority expects to enhance digital and cross-border payments and expand financial inclusion efforts by 85% by next year by combining efforts with the U.S. company. Being the only carbon negative nation globally, Bhutan is highly focused on green initiatives. As such, Ripple explained that the CBDC solution should be a match for its principles as it would be carbon neutral. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is easier in other languages. I'm sorry, I keep butchering people's names. It's really trying here, but uh, this is not as U.S. central, although it is U.S. related yeah, since but, it's Ripple. Yeah, but, uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's, it's okay. All right, let's go with the next one. Here we got uh, Dimita Zanzarov wrote: "Crypto could contribute to BNY Mellon's revenue in 2023," says CEO. America's oldest bank sees crypto potential. The Bank of New York, established in 1784 and operating today as BNY Mellon, is the oldest continuously functioning bank in the past year or so. In a recent interview, Chief Executive Officer Emily Portnoy reaffirmed that position. She predicted that Bitcoin and the alternative coins could contribute substantially to BNY's Mellon's revenue in 2023. America's oldest bank teamed up with Fireblocks in its cryptocurrency in endeavors. The latter is a unicorn fintech platform that provides digital assets custody services to some of the largest crypto investment managers, exchanges, and traditional financial institutions. Portnoy believes that the collaboration with such a partner is foundational to everything we're going to do. BNY Mellon's CEO touched up on cryptocurrency regulations too. She opined that globally watchdogs should implement clarity in the space, which will be a stepping stone for her bank, considering it is willing to govern digital assets. Portnoy expects regulators to impose rules during the first half of 2022. Quote, there are proposals in front of the Securities and Exchange Commission that haven't yet been approved or whether ETFs can actually hold digital assets directly versus futures, she added. And here is a photo of Emily Portnoy. For those that are listening, you can check us out at the C3 Media YouTube channel and see what I am seeing, a picture of Miss Emily. Continuing on, in October last year, the SEC approved the first Bitcoin strategy futures-backed ETF in the USA. The development raised hopes that the American financial regulators will also open its arms to the cryptocurrency universe and allow a spot exchange traded fund tracking the performance of Bitcoin too. According to the prominent TV host Rick Edelman, such a financial product should see the light of day in the next 24 months. Speaking of ETFs, it's worth mentioning that last summer's America's oldest bank partnered with the world's largest digital asset manager, Grayscale. As a result, the banking giant said it will assist in converting Grayscale's BTC trust into an exchange-traded fund. Shortly after, BNY Mellon, together with five other institutions, backed the cryptocurrency trading, re trading venue Pure Digital. Furthermore, it assured that its customers that it will explore new digital assets servicing solutions once the regulatory landscape developed. Currently, the banks offer Bitcoin custody, custody opportunities to its institutional clients. Beautiful. I mean, we're on the right path. With, with everything said, we're on the right path, man. Yeah. If the oldest bank in the United States decided that it needs to get into crypto, it's probably time for everybody else to. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. That's a that's a pretty good record. Seventeen ninety four. It's two hundred two hundred and thirty years old almost. I don't think Emily's that old. 
So uh, George Georgiev is going to talk about Google here. Google considers allowing users to store crypto in digital cards. <gasps> what? This is a really short one. <clears throat> Google, pardon me, the tech mogul, Google, is reportedly considering to further its involvement in the field of cryptocurrencies, as if they weren't already mining. Google, one of the lar world's biggest companies and leading search engine, is considering... You have to really say that? Anyways, is considering to allow users to store cryptocurrencies and digital cards. According to Bloomberg report, the company has also hired Arnold Goldberg to spearhead its payments division. Goldberg was previously the VP of Merchant Product and Technologies at payments processing giant PayPal. The company has some ties to the crypto industry, but nothing too definitive until now. As Crypto Potato reported earlier in 2021, Alphabet, Google's parent company, invested $1 billion in futures exchange CME, which is one of the leading providers of institutional-grade BTC futures. So, look at that. Google's getting into crypto more officially. Yes. Never, little by little. Never, thought, never thought that would happen. All right. Next news written by Shayanika Dekka. Iranian CBI officials reveal CBDC pilot phase to start soon. Yeah, but what about in America? And <laughs> in the face of massive sanctions, top Iranian officials believe cryptocurrency is a solution. The country is now looking to launch its CBDC in a pilot phase. CBDC headlines have been dominating fintech media for quite some time. Several countries are working on the national digital currency, but only a handful of them have landed in the pilot phase. Iran is the latest country that is gearing up to roll out its CBDC pilot soon. According to the latest report published by the Iranian Labor News Agency, the Central Bank of Iran, CBI, intends to launch a CBDC pilot phase shortly. The officials did not disclose any special a specific timeline for the same. The report also mentioned that the CBI Vice Governor for IT Affairs, Mehran Ma, uh, Moharamayan, sees cryptocurrencies as a solution to the growing financial instability across the world. Interestingly, the cryptocurrency industry in Iran is not regulated. However, the Central Bank of the Western Asian country has permitted domestic banks and money exchange platforms to use cryptocurrencies generated by authorized miners in the region to pay for imports. In fact, the CBIs first started to work on developing a, a digitized version of its national currency in a bid to circumvent economic sanctions imposed by the United States as well as to enable cross-border transactions. The development of Iran's national digital currency began in 2018 at the in Informatics Service Services Corporation, ISC, CBI's subsidiaries and private joint stock company. ISC officials have revealed that the Iranian cryptocurrency was being designed uh, with the help of Hyperledger Fabric Platform for the uninitiated Hyperledger is a multi-project open source platform hosted by the Linux Foundation. It was built to foster cross-industry blockchain technologies. The Iranian Chamber of Commerce, Industries, Mining, and Agricultural, ICCIMA, that's a lot of acronyms, under its supervision established I Iran Blockchain and Cryptocurrency Associations, IBCA, last year. The primary goal behind the organization was to tackle challenges faced by the country's rapidly growing cryptocurrency and blockchain ecosystem. The formation of IBCA follows the suspension of the Iran Blockchain Association IBA, by the Ministry of the Interior in June 2021 for allegedly violating its Articles of Association. Besides, Iran has been known to be one of the world's most crypto, crypto mining friendly countries but the lawmakers has imposed a temporary blanket ban on crypto mining in the summer last year, subsequently lifting them in September when the Iranian power grid became more stable. Two months later, the Iran grid management company announced halting authorized crypto mining to save energy for winter again. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I would think that uh, it would be the other way around, wouldn't it? I mean, you mining and producing that heat to try to keep people warm. 
I don't think they've read about the North Vancouver project. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would be it would be helpful to them, but I don't think they're aware of it. So let's move on to some Shiba Inu news here. Clarification to an art, the article we read last, I think, on Monday. This is by Jordan Lanchev. Shiba Inu team clarifies the situation with coin market cap. Team behind the meme uh, meme coin, Shiba Inu, said that coin market cap has approached its developers to resolve the issue of the three fake addresses on the popular data aggregator page. Lack of transparency, says Shiba Inu. There's a long tweet about it. <clears throat> Shiba Inu's team, Shiba's team, rather, said the tracking platform took decisions on behalf of the coin in a centralized manner without taking its side in, into confidence by presenting those addresses on the SHIB token page. According to the people behind the meme coin, the incident highlights, quote, critical problems surrounding the poor level of transparency and willingness to work with Shiba Inu, end quote. Police spelled out uh, of the, sp spelled, I mean, be spilled out, uh, of the processes that should have been uh, proceeded by the decision to put up SHIB smart contract address. Quote, this covers the following range of processes, verifying, repairing, and assessing risk-oriented decisions that affect the tokens page within their tracking platform to orient changes without notice of verification processes, end quote. Earlier, SHIB Inu cautioned its investors to stay away from the controversial SHIB smart contract addresses. Now, it's disputed coin market cap argument that, the, that these were cross-chain links facilitating investment from other networks like Terra, Binance, Smart, uh, Solana, and Polygon. Shiba Inu previously uh, said it faced a lack of prompt and full support from the trading platform on several occasions. Quote, we have tried to reach out multiple times respectfully, orienting our attention and professional approach in the mannerism of reachability that CoinMarketCap conveyed as the correct method of communication via their ticketed support system. At each time, the response was limited or non-existent, end quote. Shiba Inu elaborated on its grievances against CoinMarketCap. In a series of tense communications, Shiba Inu's team complained that CoinMarketCap, quote, has refused to communicate with the Shiba team on updates to the token page and willingly allowed malicious actors to vandalize our listing, end quote case of cross-chain transactions. However, CoinMarketCap has a message accompanying the controversial addresses that said, please, quote, please note that the non-ETH contract addresses on this page were, are wormhole addresses, which are des designated to facilitate cross-chain, cross-chain, pardon me, transactions of wrapped versions of the asset, end quote. CoinMarketCap tried to clarify saying that these contract addresses were not malicious, but wrapped assets that would facilitate the cross-train uh, transactions and stream streamline the user experience. I don't. I don't think that that answer really yeah. jives with the Shiba Inu's team. They kind of they're just like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's totally normal, totally normal. And Shiba Inu's like, <laughs> please stop. <laughs> please stop assuming that you know what we want. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, even in light of what's going on here, if. The people who generated those addresses paid coin market cap to do so. I know there's a lot of that going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this, oh, uh, if you want this thing, you need to pay up. Fine. But it would be nice to know if you let the people whose coin it is that you're you know, directing know that you're doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because these people don't, they're, they're like, we're getting the, the, kick, the kickback from people using this thing that is invalid or at least we didn't authorize it. And it's like, fine. But it, it, it would be behoove you to not be honest about it. And I think it's more of a cover your ass problem that uh, that uh, coin market caps kind of like, oh, uh, whatever, who cares, you know? It's, it's just yet another, another reason not to use coin market cap, but use coin gecko. And yeah, even though that's not financial advice, I still think coin gecko is better. Yeah. I, I used to use coin market cap way back in the days, but... Uh... You know, transition of hands kind of just made things a lot worse. And so they have their own um, vision of what to do with coin market cap. And unfortunately, a lot of a lot of numbers will manipulate. When you start manipulating numbers, especially right when you take over a project, it just looks bad. Like it literally you yep. put a project in, in 
in, in the hands of someone else and they just start changing numbers around. No, just, just no, no, no. So that's why I immediately yeah. just took off and just I ended up finding a uh, coin market cap, which so far to date um, is has, has been doing good and is just being better. Yeah, coin gecko rather. Yeah. Yeah. Coin gecko is better than coin market cap. Yeah. yeah. Do um, you mind if I read this next one? I it was it's very short. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the third largest Ethereum whale. Or do you want to do that one? Uh, no, go ahead. Okay, so I was reading this earlier, and it's it's very interesting to me. Uh, third largest Ethereum whale just spent fourteen million dollars on these three altcoins, which sounds kind of like clickbait, but I think there's a point to this, and that's the reason I want to read it. So Manny Williams wrote this. Um, a single crypto whale has purchased three altcoins worth over $14 million following earlier purchases. Ethereum's third largest uh, whale, dubbed Light, L-I-G-H-T, embarked on another buying spree, adding three coins at a total purchase of about $14.1 million. Um, according to the data, data from Whale Stats, a blockchain transaction tracker that keeps track of the top richest Ethereum wallet addresses and their activities, Light Wallet recently purchased... 642,999 mana valued at roughly $1.8 million. Mana is a native token of Ethereum based 3D virtual reality play to earn game Decentraland, currently trading at about $2.80 per unit. The whale also bought native token of the blockchain based virtual world sandbox, adding about 426,000 SAND or SAND worth roughly $2 million in the first purchase and an additional purchase of 1.7 million sand for a whopping $8.1 million. Sand is currently trading about $4.20 per coin at the time of this reporting. Lastly, white, the light wallet uh, bought th about 3 million CQT or $2 million worth. CQT is a native token of covalent or covalent covalent network, which provides an application programming interface suite that allows developers to pull data from several leading blockchain platforms is currently trading at about 60 cents per coin. Now, this is not the first time. The latest purchase made by this particular whale do not come as a surprise, considering that they previously made similar ones in the past few weeks. Light Wallet, which currently holds a total value of $4.3 billion in digital assets, began its latest shopping spree last week. The whale bought Get Gala tokens worth about $1.1 million more uh, then uh, $2.45 million worth of OMG tokens, over $24.1 million worth of LINK or LINK, chain link, and its latest purchase, its largest purchase, wrapped Bitcoin or WBTC, a whopping $86.4 million, which really compared to its total uh, portfolio isn't that much. In all, the Ethereum whale has splurged $128 million in recent purchases, adding two metaverse tokens and four other crypto assets. In other news, a single whale bought four trillion sheep worth $136 million at the time within 24 hours. Wow, that's a, that's a lot of money, man. That's, that's a, lot. a lot of sheep right there. Someone's really interested in sheep, and, and it goes to show you about someone who's their interest in in a particular uh, altcoins is well the interesting definitely thing about, the thing the interesting thing about sheep is that th there is actually a lot of uh, very active development going on with sheep so yep. i mean if they want to dump that kind of money in and uh, hope for the best then uh, i mean dude anybody that has that kind of money obviously knows how to make money so uh, i'm just going to say yep. that maybe would... this person knows something that we don't it would be something to follow. It, it, I mean, like you said, we're, we yeah. can't we can't give financial advice on this. We're just telling you what things are happening. You make your own dating decisions. It's just, uh, I guess, the example I would think of is if you want to get into investing, and I, I personally used this method when I first got into investing years ago. I looked. I went and looked up who's the most, you know, wealthy investor and the most intelligent investor. Well, I found some venture capitals, but eventually, and this is in the beginning, like you said, I was a noob at some point. Everyone is. Uh, Warren Buffett was the person I discovered. And I said, well, what's Warren Buffett doing? Oh, he's doing this. Now, obviously, I don't have the kind of money he has, but at my measly amount of money that I had by comparison, I said, you know what? I'll invest in the things he's investing in because that man has done a lot of research and has been working in this, this kind of field for like 65 years. He probably knows what he's doing. Right. Um, and so the same thing goes here. Although this these this light wallet, which has been dubbed as a named wallet, um, and they obviously have a lot of cash, over four billion dollars in cash, effective, 
Um, they probably know what they're doing. I, I, if I were, were let, let's let's break the scale down. Let's say four point three billion dollars was four hundred and thirty dollars instead of you know something that's more reasonable to people who don't have a lot of money. Um, a, a relative difference there. Um, Four hundred and thirty dollars is like, or, or rather, one hundred and thirty-six million is like thirteen cents, or not? No, oh, sorry, thirteen dollars. Um, is that right? Am I even right in my, in my assessment there? Um, uh, you might be wrong with that. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is it's a relatively small amount of money comparatively. Uh, you know, you're, if you're, or if it was like forty-three hundred, that would be easier to deal with. Um, Forty-three hundred dollars, somewhat reasonable price of a cheap car, um, and if you're only going to spend one hundred thirty-six, that'd be effectively one hundred thirty-six dollars, right? Oh, I'm going to spend one hundred thirty-six dollars out of my total forty-three hundred. Yeah, that's not that much, you know, comparatively speaking, um, about three percent. Not not a whole lot of money. I mean, you're talking about the the overall amount, but um, it's. Actually, they did 120. The point I'm trying to make is it's relatively small comparatively. Um, and so, but there's, it still sounds a lot, a lot to us because none of us has even a million dollars probably. Mm -hmm. So. All so. Right. Let's go to the next one here. Let's see. What do we have? Opera. We have Opera. Uh, let's see. Opera unveils Web, web 3 focus script of browser project written by Shyanika Decca. Opera, the Norwegian multinational technology company behind the popular namesake Internet Browser, has announced the beta version of its all-new crypto browser project. The blog post revealed that the new initiative has built has built in Web3 features with the end goal to accelerate the evolution of the next generation of Web3. Opera's crypto browser project aims to provide additional functionality than the traditional browser and is intended to work with different types of decentralized apps or dApps. The product, project, the product provides access to the latest blockchain news, upcoming airdrops, events, calendars, NFTs, crypto communities, educational content, podcasts, and videos. Additionally, users can also check out crypto prices gas fees, as well as general market sentiment. So it sounds pretty good to me. Opera yeah, I also, think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Opera also said they could access crypto and sign in to dApps directly from the browser with the help of the new native non-custodial wallet, crypto wallet. I'm guessing, what is it, MetaMask, maybe? Or, yeah, maybe. Or their own MetaMask. Uh, there is no need to install any extensions, native ad blockers, and... Uh, uh, and tracker uh, and tracker blockers or log browser VPNs. Crypto browser project boasts a secure clipboard that enables users to copy and paste safely. Opera introduced the world's first browser with a built-in crypto wallet back in 2018. Since then, it has integrated several blockchains such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Celo, and Nervos. Honestly, I did not know that. This is news to me. I didn't know either. I mean, I knew about one of them, but I didn't know about all of them. That's a lot. They obviously didn't do enough marketing on that. <laughs> the platform also entered into partnership with Handshake, Near, Polygon, and Solana blockchains. It has stressed that the goal is not to focus on just one blockchain or token. Rather, Opera seeks to integrate mul multiple blockchains and decentralized domain naming systems into its crypto browsers, thereby enabling users to decide which one to use. Moving forward, the browser will add more features such as Layer 2 support for growing networks, citing the environmental concerns and higher transactions cost. Opera underscored the importance of Layer 2 solutions as the industry transitions from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake networks. As part of its efforts to boast Layer 2 adoption, Opera announced integrations with Polygon and let users trans transact with Matic. The deal also enables customers to accept dApps such as SushiSwap, Aave, Balancer, among others. In addition to blockchain-powered NFT platforms such as Decentraland, OpenSea, etc. Hmm, that sounds pretty good. I want, I want, I, I want to try it out. It just sounds too good to be true. I, I want to test it out myself. Yeah, no, actually, while you were talking, I was looking. I mean, I've had Opera on my computer forever. I was primarily using it, and I hate to put it this way, as a way to get into Binance.com since 
the United States is kind of banned from it. Um, but the neat thing about Opera is it has a built-in VPN. So if you don't want to have to pay or, or use a sketchy VPN, you can use Opera's built-in VPN, which is really nice, um, in my opinion. Nice, because it just automatically, every single tab you open, just in that VPN. I, I advise uh, if you need a VPN for some reason and you don't have to go buy one from like Surfshark or, or uh, NordVPN or something, you can literally just use Opera. It and it's like, only works, it only like works the, for your browser. But. It sounds like the FBI is about to come knocking down your doors now. <laughs> I'm sure the FBI listens to our terrible podcast. <laughs> uh, all right, continuing on with the Dimitar uh, Zondaroff article. UK financial regulator proposed to treat crypto similarly to other high-risk investments. I, th I think that's appropriate. The Financial Conduct Authority, or the FCA, the top monetary regulator in the United Kingdom, proposed to tighten the rules on how high-risk investments such as digital assets are advertised. Can you already talk about this? The watchdog said companies should not be able to promote cryptocurrencies to people who lack financial knowledge and experience. Huh? I think that's smart. The FCA and the government of the United Kingdom do not rank as the most crypto-friendly institutions as they have been trying to restrict the general public from delving into digital asset space for quite a while now. Yesterday, January 18th, that was when this was written, uh, so the day before this article was written, the Chancellor of the ex Exchequer, <laughs> Rishi Sunak, proposed a law according to which Crypto ads will have similar standards to other financial instruments like stocks and shares. Specifically, promoting digital assets will only be allowed if the investment details are clear and not misleading. That's good policy. I agree with that. In a January 19 report, the FCA announced it will is willing to strengthen those rules. The agency thinks only individuals with sufficient financial knowledge and experience should enter the digital asset market. The watchdog believes dealing with Bitcoin, quote, can bring novel risks or of harm for consumers and markets, end quote, and appropriate rules should apply for the entire industry. This is, as we were saying before, better to warn people than just force them to do something. But we are therefore proposing to apply the same financial promotion rules to crypto assets as we are proposing to apply to other high risk investments, end quote. Unlike the previous harsh viewpoints of cryptocurrencies, this time the FCA recognizes some of their merits. The agency noted that the digital asset industry is rapidly growing and that millions of British investors have entered the ecosystem. Bitcoin and the altcoins, <laughs> it's funny to say it that way, have the ability to uh, increase the efficiency of the monetary system, enable faster settlements, and help better monitor, help better monitor transactions regulator claimed. In addition, stable coins could be beneficial for the macroeconomic network as well as for consumers and businesses. Despite being one of the countries uh, one of the countries with the toughest cryptocurrency regulations, digital assets are a highly attractive investment tool for UK residents. Last year, the FCA revealed that 78% of locals have heard of Bitcoin or some altcoins, while more than 2 million are actual holders. Toddlers, pardon me. <laughs> Shortly thereafter, a Coinbase research informed uh, that the that more than 50% of surveyed British adults are, quote, very interested in taking out a loan using digital asset holdings as a guarantee instead of traditional methods. At the time, 39% said they want to use cryptocurrencies to transfer money abroad and receive funds from relatives who do not reside in the UK. Brilliant. See? so much easier. You don't even have to talk to the local authority. You just say, oh, I want to send some money. There it goes. I don't care where you live. Mm -hmm. Love it. So yeah, warning warning people is good. Absolutely. I, I absolutely. Um, Elizabeth Warren, if you ever listen to this particular podcast or me in the future on another one of my podcasts or me on Twitter for that matter, please don't block people from uh, buying crypto. Just tell them how to buy it. I think that's a much better way of doing it. Sounds good. All right, next one. What do we have? Bitcoin price slips below 42K? We got that. No, um, Silvergate. Silvergate Anytime Capital. It's a Silvergate Capital's Q4 earnings showcase growth 
and cryptocurrency engagement. Written by Shayanika Decca. Silvergate Bank has produced strong growth in earnings since going public in late 2019. However, the fourth quarter earnings of 2021 failed to maintain this trend as net income slumped by almost 9%. On the other hand, fee and net interest incomes powered by digital currencies reflected growth. The cryptocurrencies friendly bank reported a net income of $21.4 million in the fourth quarter compared to $23.5 million in Q3 2021. It was still considerably larger than the $9.1 million for the fourth quarter of 2020. The announcement also revealed that customer fees income related to digital currencies rose by $9.3 million in Q4 from $8.1 million in Q3, meaning an increase of almost 15%. The figures have nearly doubled since Q4 2020 when the digital currency customer related fee income was reported to be $3.8 million. Zooming out, the income by 2021's end was $35.8 million compared to $11.1 million by 2020 end. Additionally, Silvergate observed the expansion of digital currencies customers throughout the year. In fact, the client grew to 1,381 at the end of 2021 compared to 1,305 three months back. On the other hand, digital currencies customers stood at 969 a year ago. In tandem with users, digital currency deposits also amplified in Q4. The average transfer amounts increased by over 18% from $11.2 billion to $13.3 billion. Meanwhile, the California State Chartered Bank Fiat on-ramp for Bitcoin Silvergate Exchange Network SEN, reportedly handled transfers worth $219.2 billion as opposed to $162 billion last quarter. During the third quarter earnings call, Silvergate's uh, management has confirmed that the volume uh, on SEN is massively correlated to the spot trading volume on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. The last three months of 2021 saw significantly volatility and the trading volume slumped. Despite this, SEN managed to process higher transaction transfers than third quarter volume. <clears throat> Crypto Potato earlier reported that Silvergate was Silvergate was looking to raise $461.3 million via the sales of 3.31 million of common stocks, according to a filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission at the SEC. Silvergate Bank, along with the U.S. Federal Reserve member, was reportedly working together with Bitso to enable USD transactions for El Salvador's Chivo wallet. In November last year, Silvergate also partnered with Cryptocom to facilitate USD deposits and withdrawals to the to the bank's institutional consumer base. So yeah, Silvergate is just a, another player and California-based. Looks like they're doing pretty well for themselves, and obviously. Even with the downturn in, in value lately, it's still not doing bad for itself. Yeah. Uh, the last article is about OpenSea. OpenSea acquires Dharma Labs to explore fiat for NFTs. Mm, this sounds troubling to me. By Martin Young. On January 18th, OpenSea announced they acquired Dharma Labs for an undisclosed amount. The world's top NFT marketplace was recently valued at $13.3 billion following its latest funding round. Sources at the 2017 founded firm told Reuters that the deal would help it, quote, dramatically improve the experience of buying, minting, and selling NFTs, end quote, on its platform. Axios reported that uh, the two companies were in talks earlier this month, adding that, quote, deals terms are still being hammered out and with current talk of all stock deal valued at between 110 and 130 million dollars end quote acquisition will involve a shift at the top OpenSea stated that its cto alex uh, atala would have a new role managing the firm's web3 and nft ecosystem development the position would be filled by dharma labs chief executive uh, nadav hollander hollander who recently uh, worked for Google and Coinbase, commented that OpenSea grew practically a thousand X overnight, end quote, on the back of a massive explosion of NFT markets in 2021 before adding, quote, we now have the historic opportunity to build a truly gen uh, generational product. I'm excited to focus on the scaling 
on scaling OpenSea's tech to meet the reliability, performance, and uptime benchmarks its users expect and deserve, end quote. Dharma started out as a DeFi lending app that allowed users to deposit fiat in order to trade tokens on Uniswap. The company is also heavily intertwined with the world's leading decentralized exchange. It's uh, integrated with the DEX in 2020 and holds a massive bag of uni tokens, uh, making it one of the lar- one of the major voting influences in Uniswap's governments. That's interesting because it's decentralized, right? Dharma's app will be retired according to the announcement and is likely to that something similar will be developed by OpenSea to enable users to buy and sell NFTs for fiat in addition to crypto. OpenSea has seen record volumes so far this year, and I guess that's true in 2021, or 2022 rather, and has already eclipsed August of 2021, its previously previous high month for trading. According to Dune Analytics, OpenSea has notched up its $3.8 billion in sales on Ethereum so far this month. The marketplace has recorded 1.4 million NFTs sold since the beginning of the year. Wow, that's pretty. That's a whole lot since 19 days have passed. Its active traders uh, count has also hit a record figure this month with 388,843 traders so far. Previous highest month for this metric was December 2021 when there were 362,679 active traders on the platform, according to Dune. So, yeah. Like, uh, I... I I'm not totally against the idea of moving more fiat into um, into the crypto space, mm-hmm. since eventually we all think fiat's just going to become that old hat, I... like a uh, Bitcoin classic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would like to see things pegged to uh, to Bitcoin. But you st- you're still using USD? No, no, not Tether. USD. It's, yeah, you still using. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Oh. It's funny because I, I kind of brought up that con- that that. that something like that uh with people using f- fiat like little, you're, you're still using cash like what about tap to pay like i use my watch i just t- tap my watch on, on the nfc uh um uh scanner bleep just yeah. that's it or I, I smash my forehead on on, on the scanner bleep All right. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i still use it's funny because you know the credit cards we have now have the little chip in them uh-huh. And the chip acts the same way. You can just tap your, your card yeah. on the uh, uh, near field communications reader. That, that seems to offend people less. People are like, oh, you have Apple Pay? I'm like, um, no, but it's basically the same thing. <clears throat> yeah, that's funny that people say that. That's the first thing they say, Apple Pay. So I, obviously Apple did a lot of marketing for that because, I mean, I have uh, – I have, I don't have Apple Pay. I have uh, Android Pay. I have Samsung Pay and I have Google Ooh. Google Pay. Okay, <laughs> I, have, yeah. I have all those three wallets except Apple Pay. But the first thing people is when I say, "Can I pay with my phone?" It's like, "Oh, Apple Pay, yeah." I was like, "No, you have Samsung Pay." It's like, "What?" It's, like it's, it's kind of like not, it's like what? It's tap to pay. It's tap to yeah, pay. Tap it's to digital pay. tap to pay. But everyone calls it Apple Pay because Americans, unfortunately, most Americans use Apple phones. I think I think Apple just did way better marketing uh, on that than any 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 else. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then so. mo- a lot of other people have iPhones, which it just is, it's so funny when people are like, "How can you not have an iPhone?" Like, because I I like to think. <laughs> Tap to pay. I'm a thinking person. Apple. I'm not saying all Apple users are non-thinking per- persons, but a lot of them prefer that standpoint. <laughs> so. That's all the news we have for uh, these two days, the 20th and the 19th. Sounds good. Then let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right. We appreciate if you liked this content, we would appreciate a like from you, hint, hint, on uh, YouTube. I know you can't like on Anchor, but we appreciate you listening if you're listening only. And if you'd like to subscribe, we'd also appreciate that too. But you don't have to recognize that. If it's just a one-off, we are fine with it. We'd rather have people really like our content continuously listening so thank you for listening and you can hit the notification we post every wednesday and sunday on a regular basis uh you can catch us on discord there's a link you can also participate in patreon if you wish uh as well as donate with bitcoin ethereum binance bat and raven all the the links are in the description below with the coin tree link perfect all right kryptonauts with that said Uh, Until next time.
Oh, thank you, Jake. Thank you, Alyssa, for being on the podcast. Until next time, stack sats and huddle.